why do deep sea creatures evolve into giants? Describing the ocean as mysterious would certainly rank among the understatements of the year. Given how little of it has been explored by man, it is possible we haven't even begun scratching the surface of what there is to know about the seven seas. One particular mystery is the reason why certain deep sea species grow to much larger proportions than their relatives in the shallows. What we know for sure is that many of the world's largest vertebrates and invertebrates are seemingly at home in the dark depths of the ocean. The following video is a <laughs> deep dive into this phenomenon and an exploration of the few species that survive and thrive as giants in the dark. So without further ado, let's get started. What is the deep sea? Let's start by examining what the term deep sea means exactly. In most cases, this term refers to a depth of 660 feet and below. This is generally where light from the surface begins to fade. Ocean depth is divided up into layers or depth zones. The top zone is epipelagic, aka the sunlight zone, which ranges from the surface to about 330 feet. Light from the sun and the moon penetrates this zone easily, giving life to an abundance of flora and fauna. In fact, most oceanic life is found within this 330-foot zone. The second zone is the mesopelagic, which continues down to about 3,300 feet. So, technically speaking, the deep sea begins at the upper levels of the mesopelagic zone, which is also known as the ocean's twilight zone. The third zone is bathypelagic, which goes down to nearly 9,800 feet below the surface. This is also referred to as the midnight zone, because even the brightest of summer suns cannot illuminate it. The only natural light in this zone is from bioluminescent creatures that live in it. Plants, algae, and plankton that require photosynthesis cannot survive in this zone. Next up is the abyssopelagic zone, which extends as far as 19,600 feet. This is the abyss, home to a seafloor ecosystem. Fun fact, this ecosystem is the largest one on Earth by area measuring a jaw-dropping 115,830,647 square miles of real estate. In more digestible terms, the abyss represents about 60% of the Earth's total area. However, it gets crazier. You see, some parts of the ocean floor have trenches that extend beyond the abyss. These trenches are also classified as depth zones, the hadopelagic. The hadopelagic extends to well over 36,000 feet below the surface, and represents the true bottom of the ocean. The Mariana Trench, which is officially the deepest point on Earth, is about 36,037 feet below sea level. For further context, Mount Everest is 29,035 feet above sea level. Of course, the Mariana Trench is the deepest point that has been discovered so far. There may be deeper trenches, and even a need to classify new zones. Diminishing light is not the only environmental change that comes with going deeper under the surface pressure gets much higher and temperatures get much lower. Pressure in the hadopelagic can be over 1,000 times higher than at the surface, while temperatures range between 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, dissolved oxygen goes down by about 10% with every 3-foot drop in depth. Yet, despite these harsh conditions, life has found a way, even in the unknowable pitch black of the abyss and hadopelagic zones. Animals of all shapes and sizes make up ecosystems that have evolved for hundreds of millions of years. Some of these animals have adapted to life in these zones by growing to monstrous sizes befitting any sci-fi horror film. Why are deep-sea creatures extra large? First of all, it's important to address the evolution of large deep-sea fauna by its proper name, deep-sea gigantism. Deep-sea gigantism is still a hotly debated phenomenon and has been attributed to a variety of factors. One such theory is concerned with the reduced oxygen levels of deep water. Because deep ocean waters are not in as much contact with the atmosphere as waters closer to the surface, they have less oxygen. Additionally, lack of photosynthetic life like plants and plankton means deep sea waters have significantly less oxygen than waters in the epipelagic zone. The theory suggests that since there is less oxygen in the deep sea, some organisms have grown larger to enable their bodies to harvest more of it. If these deep-sea giants were smaller, they would be at risk of asphyxiation. Another theory, which mainly focuses on large crustaceans like the giant isopod of the Bathonomus genus, suggests that the lower temperatures of the dark deep influence massive body size. Proponents of this theory argue that lower temperatures lead to greater cell size and delayed sexual maturity, both of which lead to longer lifespans and greater body size. 
The third theory is simply a lack of predators compared to ecosystems in the top zone of the ocean. The epipelagic zone is teeming with life, which in turn supports longer food chains featuring diverse predators. However, with fewer predators in the deep, larger specimens of various species were able to grow and reproduce, which led to bigger and bigger individuals over time. Another possible explanation for deep-sea gigantism is food scarcity, a condition that would have promoted the development of better metabolisms and larger food stores. Supporters of the food scarcity theory tend to base their view on Kleiber's law, which was named after a biologist named Max Kleiber. Kleiber's law states that for many animals, the metabolic rate scales up in efficiency in proportion to an increase in size. The other pillar of the scarcity theory is the simple fact that a larger body can store more food and energy reserves. Naturally, opponents of this view argue that a larger body would demand more energy for movement and therefore a greater need to eat. However, proponents argue against this because deep-sea creatures can just drift along without expending as much energy as gravity-battling land animals. One animal that represents the food scarcity view well is the colossal squid, Mesonicotuthis hamiltoni, which can grow up to 1,500 pounds. However, despite its great size, the squid can exert as little as 50 calories a day. Its metabolism can slow to a point where a 10-pound fish could provide sustenance for nearly seven months. Some gigantism theories are somewhat opposed to others. One of these suggests that because of the scarcity of food in the depths, any given animal is under constant threat of being eaten by something bigger. As a result, these animals have had to grow bigger to remove themselves from the menu. Biologist Craig R. McLean attributed the gigantism of deep-sea creatures to the island rule, which states that isolated creatures tend to evolve into larger species. His study analyzed the differences between the top ocean zones and the depths and the impact on the respective animal life. The conclusion was that deep-sea animals face similar environmental factors to terrestrial island animals that have evolved into bigger offshoots of their mainland counterparts. Some of the factors McLean's study singled out include limited food resources, lower temperatures, and lack of predators. What giant animals live in the deep sea? There is a surprising number of animals that grow to be substantially larger in the deep sea than in shallow waters. Amphipods, for starters, typically grow to about 30 millimeters on land and in the upper epipelagic zone in the ocean. However, in the abyss and below, they can grow to over 12 inches, which is nearly 900% larger than shallow species. We also have the aforementioned giant isopod, which actually refers to over a dozen species that vastly outgrow their near-surface relatives. Giant isopods are famed for their gluttony whenever they encounter food. These crustaceans will feast until they can barely move and then keep eating. This opportunistic overindulgence, combined with a super slow metabolism, allows giant isopods to go nearly five years without food. Jellyfish also grow to exceptional sizes in the deep. The giant phantom jellyfish, aka Stygiomedusa gigantea, is a horrific creature you certainly don't want to bump into. This ultra-rare jelly is believed to be lurking in the depths of all major oceans bar the Arctic. The phantom lives and hunts in the pitch black of the midnight zone, where it tangles up small fish and plankton with its ghostly 30-foot tentacles. However, the most famed deep-sea invertebrate is the giant squid, Archituthus ducks, which can grow to nearly 40 feet in length. This rare animal has only been recorded live a handful of times and continues to be a star subject in marine research. Giant squids eat smaller squids and fish while only being preyed upon by the sperm whale. The colossal squid is a close relative that shares the same characteristics as the giant squid. However, it is not as long but can be more than twice as heavy, making it the largest known invertebrate on the planet. As far as vertebrates, few animals are as fascinating as the deep-dwelling, cold-loving Greenland shark, or Somniosus microcephalus. This amazing animal can reach lengths of up to 23 feet and weigh up to 3,000 pounds. However, size is not the most impressive thing about this creature. Research has shown that Greenland sharks live life in the ultra-slow lane in almost every regard, including lifespan. While many shark species' lives are measured in decades, if they're lucky, the Greenland shark's lifespan is measured in centuries. These deep-sea sharks are believed to live up to or even over 500 years old. Here's a fun fact to help you wrap your head around that. There have been 47 popes between 500 years ago and the publishing of this video, which is simply incredible.
Greenland sharks thrive in the dark depths of the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, feeding on anything that fits into its mouth. They reach sexual maturity after 150 years.